Hey guys, Stephen 911 here with a rough demonstration video. So we're going to start by explaining the departure from Luton, but if you've just come from my video about SIDS, then you can click on the annotation and skip ahead to the actual flight. Hope you enjoy. Firstly, let's confirm that this is for departing runway 26. So once we take off, the first thing to do is to climb up to 500 feet. Next would be to pick up the 033 degree radial from Bovington. Alternatively, you can set your VOR to 213 so that you're flying to the VOR station. Then, once we're 7 miles from the station, we would need to turn right and fly a course of 257 degrees to the Henton NDB station. As we do that, we would need to adjust our VOR rounds to a radial of 005 from the VOR station. The reason we do this is so that we know when to begin the next turn. As we pass that radial, we would begin a turn onto the 345 degree radial from Bo sorry from Bovington, and then from there it's a straight line until we reach Aldi. However, if you look closely, you will notice along this part of the departure that we now have altitude restrictions in place. So the first one we have is at 6 miles from Bovington. We need to make sure that we're above 4,000 feet. At 9 miles away, we must be at 5,000 feet and not above or below it. Then after that we can climb up to 6,000 feet and hold that altitude until we're 15 miles away from the VOR station. And then if you follow the departure the rest of the way to Olney, you can see that we need to be passing Olney at 6,000 feet as well. Then after that you're free to follow whichever airways you need from the Olney waypoint. Okay, so here we are in the plane. Um, now I've already set up um, pretty much everything that I need uh, to do this flight. So um, first things first, I've got the Bovington VOR set in there on my Nav1 radio. And I've already set the VOR indicator to a radial of 033 for the first kind of leg of the departure there. Um, if we have a look at our altitude, um, the field elevation for Luton is about 500 feet. So um, if you have a look at the departure procedure, we need to climb up to 500 feet QFE, so field elevation. So once we're 500 feet above the ground here, um, that's when we need to begin our turn towards the Bovington VOR for the first leg of the journey. So once we hit about 1,000 feet, that's when I'll begin the turn. Um, and I've also set in our NDB there as well. So once we get off the ground, you'll see the, um, the NDB needle sort of come alive there. Um, as for fl actually flying the plane, I'm going to be using the autopilot to take care of it. So I've set in 5,000 feet initially um, because our first kind of major altitude restriction that we can't go above is 5,000 feet. So I'm going to climb up to 5,000 feet, level off there, and then once we reach the relevant point of the departure, then I can then climb again uh, as per the p departure procedures. And also for headings, I'm going to be using just a heading hold here. Now you can see I've set the uh, heading bug to the runway heading. So let's take off and give this one a go. So again, I'm not going to worry about um, following checklists or doing proper procedures. I'm just um, using this video to demonstrate how to fly this, uh, this sort of departure there. Take off. And then we'll get our altitudes and the heading held there. Of course, normally we wouldn't do that in real life, but I'm just you know demonstrating the whole uh, the whole departure procedure here. So you can see that the NDB or the ADF indicator now has come alive and is pointing directly to it. So that's all working. That's good. And you can see that we've got distance now to our VOR here. So you can see that we're closing in on the, um, the 033 degree radial to Bovington. We're up at 500 feet above the, um, the runway now. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to hold the runway heading until we get in line with the, uh, the radial. And then I'll turn down to a heading of, I think it was 213 degrees to follow the radial all the way in. So we'll just fly st straight just now, and then once we uh, get in line, then I'll turn across. So everything's 
stable, everything's going well. So, we'll turn around now. Two, two, one, three is about there. So you can see I'm also doing this in the uh, the 2D view for a change, just so you can see the instruments a bit clearer and uh, you can see what's going on a bit better there. So the next kind of major point is once we reach a distance of seven nautical miles from the Bovington VOR, that's when we'll turn and follow the um, the NDV signal here. What I need to do on this ADF is I actually need to flick this round to our current heading as well. So. It's a bit inaccurate there, so um, it's around about there, 213 degrees. So theoretically, once this reaches 257, that's when we would begin our turn as well. But I'm going to take the um, the VOR and the uh, DME measurements there right over the uh, the ADF indicator there, because the ADF in the default FSX Cessna is a bit inaccurate, to say the least. <laughs> So we're up at about 2,400 feet now, speed is good, the speed's a little bit quicker than it should be, but uh, not going to worry about that too much. <coughs> okay, so the other thing I'll need to be aware of is as we climb I'll need to uh, reduce the mixture slightly just so we get uh, good engine performance the higher up we get. So we're starting to lose the uh, radius ever so slightly there, not a big deal because we're about 7 miles away now. So what we'll do is we'll turn out to a heading of 257, which is around about there, and then that should put our ADF needle bang on. Uh, actually I'm Yeah, I've got that right. I thought I got the heading wrong there for a second. You can see our ADF now is pointing straight up, which is good. So, what we need to do now is adjust the VOR around to a radial of 055. Which I think is there. So what happens is when the needle kind of swings around to centre, that's when we know that we're passing that radial. So once it hits the centre, then we can adjust it again onto the um, 345 radial and then we'll be able to turn onto that and follow that away from Bovington. So everything is going well so far. So we're just about, or we're coming up to cross 4,000 feet. So if you remember a bit later on in the um, in the departure, once we get established on on our kind of final leg up towards Olney, the first kind of major altitude restriction is we need to be above 4,000 feet. So um, we're just about to cross that now, so that's not going to be a worry. And then, as I said, a bit further along, we need to make sure that we're at a specific altitude of 5,000 feet, and then up at 6,000 feet. So you'll see that uh, in a few minutes' time once we reach the relevant points there. You can see now that the speed is starting to come down, so I'm going to reduce the um, rate of climb and also start changing the mixture there. Just to make sure the engine's got good performance and also um, that we don't stall the aircraft during the, uh, during the climb there. So you can see we're still heading towards the um, NDV station, according to the ADF. The VOR indicator is also moving. So once that hits, uh, as I said, once that hits centre, then we'll um, turn that round to a radial of three, four, five degrees, and then we'll begin our turn onto the uh, the kind of the final part of the departure where we're just heading the straight line up towards Aldi. So there's radial zero zero five now. So we'll flick that round to three, four, five, which I believe is there. Um, airspeed has come back up again slightly, which is good. Uh, we're closing up on 5,000 feet, which is what we're going to hold at for the time being. And 
what I'll do is once I start seeing some movement on this VOR indicator then I'll kind of do a half a turn towards the radial and then once we pick it up I'll um, line up with it. Because usually this would be sort of flown by jets so you'd be moving a lot quicker and everything would be happening much faster. So we'll turn around to our heading of 300 degrees just to kind of reduce the angle that we kind of intercept the VOR at. And now we don't really need the ADF here, so um, not really worried about that. We're just worried about picking up the uh, the radio now. And there it is. So turn on to heading of three, four, five. There, I think I've gone past that actually. A bit sloppy, but never mind. Okay, so now the next consideration that we have is now that we're turning on, we turned onto that radial and we're heading towards Olney now. The first thing is the altitude restriction, which was at six nautical miles. We needed to be above four thousand feet, and um, we're up at five thousand now, so that's fine. We're not worried about that. We're not breaking any uh, any rules there. So six miles there, and we're above four thousand feet. Now the next altitude restriction is at 9 miles where we need to be at 5,000 feet, we need to be at specifically 5,000 feet so we're there already so that's good so we're just going to wait until we reach, <coughs> pardon me, we reach that distance from the uh, VOR station. I'm doing a bad job of tracking this, uh, this radio here. So I'll just um, change the uh, NDB frequency there because we don't really need the ADF indicator anymore. We're doing everything off the, uh, the VOR and the DME now. Just trying to get back onto this radio perfectly here. Okay, so once we pass uh, a distance of 9 miles, so we need to be at 5,000 feet, and then the next altitude restriction after that will be at 15 miles, where we need to be at 6,000 feet. So once we pass 9 nautical miles, what I'll do is I'll begin a slow climb up to uh, 6,000 feet. So there we go now, so we're passing over that next kind of point of the uh, departure. So we'll tune our autopilot up to 6,000 feet and we've got uh, a climb rate of 400 feet per minute so this is a very gentle climb, we'll keep the speed up as we go and um, you should be okay. So this is what's known as a, a stepped climb which is where you climb up to a specific altitude, hold it until you reach a point of the departure and then climb again to a different altitude and hold. So if you look at the altitude profile you're kind of going up slightly and then flying level, up slightly, flying level, up slightly, flying level, like a set of stairs almost. And you'll see that um, when we take a look at the um, the flight analysis afterwards. So everything is going fine, so I'm just going to cut the video here until we reach the next point, which will be at a distance of 15 nautical miles. Okay, so we're about half a mile away now from the next point of the uh, the departure. Uh, you can see I'm not struggling to fo follow the uh, the radial perfectly there, but um, you know it's only a quick demonstration. It's not nothing drastic. And you can see we're also up at 6,000 feet now at 15 miles. So um, so that's that kind of point of the uh, the departure past now. And if you remember, if we have a look up at Olney, um, we also need to be passing Olney at 6,000 feet as well. So. Um, that's going to be at a distance of 25.1 nautical miles, so once we reach that point um, I'll skip the video ahead to there and then we'll take a quick look at that and uh, and then we'll have a look at the flight analysis after to see how well I did.
Okay, so I'm back again. So we're about a mile away now from the um, Olney, according to uh, the uh, departure procedure chart. Um, you can see we're still at 6,000 feet here, and I've finally got onto the, uh, the correct radio there. Uh, it took me a bit of time, so that's probably going to look a bit wobbly on the um, on the flight analysis when we have a look at it in a minute. Um, so now we're just waiting for 25.1 nautical miles, and then I'll stop the flight there, and we'll have a look at the, um, the analysis. So there we go. So now we should be theoretically we should be over Olney, but we'll uh, we'll have a look uh, just now. Okay, so you can see at the end of the flight here, this is um, where I got to, and you can see I'm not quite an Olney, um, but that's pretty good in my opinion. And then if we zoom out and we have a look at the uh, the rest of the um, departure there, you can see the line's a little bit wobbly, hidden away from. Um, from Luton there, but you can see we've got the general shape of the uh, of the uh, departure there. So we took off, followed the runway heading, then we turned down towards Bovington down here. Uh, so we followed that in, and then we turned out towards the Hinton NDB, and then there's a little bit of a sharp turn there to follow the radial away from. Uh, from Bovingdon and up to Olney, so uh, so there you go. And also, if we have a look at um, the climb out here, so we had a steady climb up to 5,000 feet, and you can see how we were level, and then we climbed up again to 6,000 feet. So that's that kind of stepped climb. So you climb up, fly level, climb up, fly level, and then uh, from there, obviously, from Olney, you would then climb up to your cruising altitude and uh, go on your merry way.